Hello, welcome back to this lesson of engineering circuit analysis. Here we're going to progress a little bit more in talking about op amps. We're going to discuss some very critical things that you need to understand before we can actually do any analysis. The first thing that we're going to talk about is we're actually going to talk about the pins uh, of the op amp. What do they mean? Uh, we'll get into a lot more of that as we go along, but in general we'll discuss what they mean and how they function, what they're used for. And we'll also be introducing the circuit symbol for the op amp, which at its most basic form is just a triangle. We've kind of shown you that before, but I need to discuss a little bit more about what's going on and how we actually use it. So let's get started and handle these things right now. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. Now we've kind of introduced some of this in the past. We're going to go in a little bit more detail now. The typical pinout that you would see for a, a dual inline package, an actual physical package that you would see for an op amp, would go something like this. You have some terminals there. We have one, two, three, four, uh, and then over here, five, number six, number seven, and number eight. And we're not going to get into excruciating detail on this, uh, but we are going to introduce them. So the first guy here uh, is called offset null. Okay. The second guy is extremely important, one of the ones you'll be using all the time. It's called the inverting input. input. Okay, and this guy, number three, is again extremely important. It's called a non-inverting input. Alright, uh, number four is something called V minus. We'll talk about that in a second. Number five is something called NC. We'll talk about that in a second. Number six is called V plus. Again, we'll talk about that. Number seven is the output. This is essentially going to be the output of the amplifier. And then number eight is going to be what we call, again, offset null. All right, so we're going to talk briefly about these. Now, as we go on in the class, of course, we're going to be using them in a lot more detail. So this is just consider this to be an introduction. And by the way, this is the pinout associated with a typical mass-produced 741 op amp. As I mentioned in the last lesson, there are hundreds, maybe even thousands of different kinds of op amps out there. This is just the most common one that we typically learn first. All right, let me go through here and just explain what these things are, because you're going to be thrown into a lot of terminology in your class pretty early on, whatever class you're taking. All right, offset null is something that we're not going to be talking about at all here in the beginning. Uh, it's, you have two pins, pin number one, pin number eight, offset null. Basically, it's used to compensate this amplifier that's inside of here for degradation of performance. So as time goes on, these things age, or maybe they came off the assembly line. You know, these are mass-produced millions at a time. They're, they're not going to be, one of these things is not going to be exactly the same functionally as the other. There'll be very slight and minute differences in how they're fabricated. So the offset null terminals, uh, if you were to hook them up to an external circuit, can be used to kind of fine-tune the performance of this amplifier based on performance degradation. Uh, over time. Or if there was some problem coming off the assembly line, you could, you could trim it out and kind of change how, how uh, the output, the behavior of this amplifier. So because we're not concerned with things like performance degradation right now, we're not going to use offset null at all, but that's what it's for. All right. The number two terminal here is called the inverting input. So what you need to know right now, uh, the reason this is called inverting and non-inverting input, don't worry so much about that right now. We're going to, to actually create a, show, show you a circuit and you'll quickly understand why one of them is called inverting and one of them is called non-inverting. But for now, you just need to know that there's actually two inputs to this amplifier. One of them is called inverting, that's pin number two. One of them is called non-inverting, that's pin number three. And I'll, I'll give you kind of a sneak peek because we're going to do this pretty soon in a second. This amplifier, it, it, it doesn't just amplify pin number two or pin number three. What it's really doing is it's taking the difference between these inputs and amplifying the difference between them. And you'll understand why it's constructed that way as we actually start to get into it. But that's why there's two inputs and only one output. Because really what's happening internally is it's looking at the difference of these voltages that are presented at the inputs of pins two and three, amplifying it by some factor, and then sticking it onto the output there. All right. Now V minus and V plus are cousins, and that is because these are the power supplies that you hook up externally to power this amplifier. You don't get something for nothing in this world. You can't send inputs here to this device and have it amplified without consuming some external power from somewhere, or otherwise it would violate conservation of energy from physics, right? So the external power that's coming in here to power the electronics in here, just like your, your stereo amplifier is plugged into the wall, right? 
And you can consider these uh, inputs, these inverting and non-inverting, almost like a microphone that you would be plugging in, the input signal. But you still have to have the wall power, and that's going to be powering the electronics to do the amplification. Now, the reason why there's a V- minus and a V- plus will become apparent as we, as we go uh, down through the course, but the bottom line is these input signals can swing positive and negative, just like a waveform, you know, like you think about a microphone waveform. So you're going to have kind of a sinusoidal input to this, which we'll talk about. Well, you don't have to. It can be just a constant input, but they also can be oscillating. So to handle the positive amplifications, on the positive side, you need a positive power supply, and you need a negative power supply giving you a negative voltage relative to the ground. We'll talk about that in a second, which is supplied here. Usually V plus and V minus are symmetric. So for instance, V plus could be 10 volts, and V minus could be minus 10 volts. And v plus could be 15 volts, V minus could be minus 15 volts. They do not have to be symmetric. You could have V plus of 10 and V minus of 5, but that would have limitations that we'll talk about later if you do it that way. Usually V plus, V minus are the same and just opposite signs. Now, of course, uh, pin number 7 is the output. That's where the output uh, signal is, is tapped from. That's what you would send off to your speaker. Or if you have multiple stages of your amplifier, you would take this output and send it into a new amp uh, amplifier, which would continue the amplification process. And then we already talked about pin number 8, which is offset null. We're not using that. Uh, there. I think I might have skipped one. NC is no connection. That is internally pin number five isn't connected to any electronics, so it's just not used for anything at all. You know, they have eight pins here for manufacturing purposes, but one of them is just unconnected, no connection. So that's about the, the extent of really what I want to talk about the pin out. Usually in, uh, in engineering, we're, we're not doing things like this until your circuit is designed and you're actually laying it out on a circuit board. What we want to do now is talk a little bit about the circuit symbol. And again, we're going to get into a whole lot more detail as time goes on, but let's just at least introduce the circuit symbol for the op amp. And we've kind of shown this before. The uh, circuit sample for, in general, an amplifier, and specifically an op amp, is just a triangle. All right, so what you have here is a few things I need to draw on here so that you'll understand how it's laid out. The pointy end of the triangle here is always the output. So you can kind of consider signals flowing in to the left, being amplified, and flowing out to the right. And so since the signals are flowing um, into the, or going into the left here, you have a couple of really important terminals. One of them is uh, this guy here, and this guy here. Can you guess which ones they are? Well, you have the non-inverting and the inverting input. So let's draw it like this. This will be the non-inverting. input. Okay, non-inverting input, and then this is the inverting input. All right, so if you were to look at it as just a big, big picture, this is all you have to really know. You have the inverting input, the, uh, the non-inverting, the inverting, and the output. Of course, there's a black box here. You don't really understand or know what's inside of it, but it does an amplification process. Now, for op amps, there's a couple of other things that we typically need to draw. You see that we have these external power supplies that are connected to it that are providing the energy for the, for the amplification process. So we have to draw them. We can't just leave them out entirely. So what you do is you kind of draw them up and down. So we call this... This can be called the positive power supply, right? And then coming out of nowhere, straight down like this, we can call this the negative power supply. All right, so what we've done is we've drawn the op amp circuit in words, right? We've drawn the giant words non-inverting input, inverting input, positive power supply, negative power supply, output. So those are all you know, great, but the reality of it is you're not going to draw these words in your circuit symbol. So this is the general idea. By the way, these power supply terminals, you can see this wire is kind of going in and it's just kind of hanging into nothingness. That's because you really don't know what's inside of here. You're just denoting that there's power going into this box that's not really in line with the input signal or the output signal. It's kind of powering the internal electronics separately. That's why it's kind of going and just kind of floating there. All right. Now what we're going to do is redraw this symbol with... Uh, and simplify it a little bit and, and a little bit closer to what you're going to see in an actual circuit. So let's go ahead and do that here. And let's draw a little division line here so we don't get confused. So we have a, a couple little areas here. Let's draw the same exact circuit symbol again. Again, it's a triangle, of course. Okay. Um, what you're going to do uh, to denote this positive and negative power supply on a real circuit, typically, is you will draw 
the line going up, and you'll just write V plus up here, the positive power supply, the line down, V minus the negative power supply, instead of writing those words out. And then you're going to, instead of writing this word non-inverting input and inverting input, those are just really long words, what you're going to do is you're going to have an input here, which corresponds to this non-inverting input, but what you're going to do is instead of writing that word, you just put a plus sign on the inside of the op amp, and then you'll have another line here, and you'll have a negative sign right there to show you that that input goes there, and then of course the output is on the other side, implied. So you see, what well, all I've done is I've taken the symbol and redrawn it. I don't have any words here. It's in, implied that you know that the output is here. You don't have to write that. It's implied that this is an input and this is an input. The plus, it corresponds to the non-inverting input, um, which is pin number three, and the minus corresponds to the inverting input, which is pin number two. So that's all you really need to know for now. And in fact, that's that's really all I'm going to introduce in this lesson. We haven't wired it up in a circuit. We're going to do that in the next lesson. I just wanted to introduce the concept of what these things are because it's kind of a little bit overwhelming when you first, you know, you're first studying Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's laws and all this math, and then I throw an op amp it with you and I start talking about non-inverting inputs, and you're like, what is that? So I'm trying to ease into it and show you, hey, these are just pins on a, on a circuit, basically, and you have these inputs that we have to have labels for, and we label them non-inverting and inverting. You'll understand why when we get to that in a little bit. But we basically have a plus and a minus input which corresponds to non-inverting and inverting input. And the output is always implied to be at the pointy end of the triangle. So that's basically all you need to know. Follow me on to the next lesson. We're going to get a little bit more detailed and we'll actually wire this thing up into a basic circuit so that you can kind of see how it might in general be hooked up.